Welcome to lesson 3.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Uh, in the last lesson, lesson 3.1, uh, we just quickly went over some of the world properties and object properties that can impact how your world looks. What I want to do in lesson 3.2 is put those properties together and create a cool looking scene. Uh, I've decided that what I want to do is make an underwater scene. I want to play with the fog levels and the light levels and create a realistic looking undersea screen. The problem with most beginning Alice programmers is they just hold on to the default world properties and everything is very sharp and very unrealistic looking. Now we're not going to make any kind of super 3D models or ultra photorealistic games or objects in Alice, but you can definitely make it look a little bit cooler than it does by default. So if you follow along this video, we'll make a really neat looking undersea world so that when you create your animations, your games, your programs, and your pictures, yours will look just a little bit better than everyone else who is using default Alice. So I've cleared my screen here. We're going to take all of these properties and put them together and make a unique scene. And what I'm going for is kind of a cool undersea scene. I want to make it look like we're at the bottom of the ocean. To do this, I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to use the Sand Template. With the Sand Template loaded, I'm going to change some of the world properties to make the scene look a little bit more realistic. So make sure that World is selected, and make sure that Properties on the Properties tab are selected. The first thing I want to do is change the atmosphere color. This light blue works well for a sky, but I'm going for a much darker blue to represent under the sea. I'm going to change my atmosphere color to the default blue on the pull-down list, give it more of a, a blue, deep, watery color. The next thing that I want to do is add some fog. I'm going to do this with the fog density style, so select fog density. This is a little too dense for me. I, I want to be able to create a scene that I can still work with and put some objects in, so I'm going to lower the density of the fog. Right now it's set to 0.01. I'm going to change the fog density to 0 0.03. I'm going to take away about 70% of the fog here. And that's looking pretty good. I want the world to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to change the ambient light color from this darker gray to black. While it doesn't have a huge effect on the world, it does give it more of a darker tone. I'm going to try lowering the light brightness too, to see if I can maybe make the world a little bit darker. I'm going to change the ambient light brightness from 1 to value of 0.1. And that didn't have too big of an effect on my world, so the light brightness really, like I said, doesn't have a huge impact, but it's, it's something that you can play around with. So now I have a pretty good looking undersea world here. Let's start adding some objects. Click on your green Add Objects button and let's scroll over to the Ocean category. Here we go, we've got Ocean and I want to add some seaweed to my world. Scroll over to the Seaweed class and drag a piece into your world. Now that's a really small piece of seaweed. Let's resize it and make it a little bit bigger. Be careful when working with small objects in your Alice world. It's not uncommon to accidentally click the ground and either resize or duplicate or somehow change the ground. If you do that, hit Control-Z and it will reset the ground back to where it was. I'm going to click on Resize, click once until I see the bounding box, then click again to make the seaweed a little bit bigger. I now want to duplicate that seaweed a couple times to add a little bit more character to my scene. In addition, I'm going to use the Resize tool to change the seaweed so it's not all the exact same size. That looks pretty good right there. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a stingray to the scene. So I'm going to drag the stingray and have them centered between these two pieces of seaweed. 
I'm going to want the seaweed, the, not the seaweed, I'm going to want the stingray to be off the ocean floor a little bit. So I'm going to use the move objects up and down button and move him just slightly off the ground, then tilt him forward so that he's more easily seen by the camera. I think a shark would make a good centerpiece for our picture here. So I'm going to take a shark, drag them to the center, raise him up a little bit so he's definitely not on the ocean floor, turn him so he's facing the camera, and resize him. That's a pretty good looking shark there. And maybe add a few fish to our scene. So let's add, let's add just the traditional fish class. I've got the fish added here. I'm going to raise the fish off the ground by using the up and down command. And I'm going to drag him maybe to the right. And let's make a whole school of fish. Let's use the duplicate object to make about six or seven fishes. Now I want them all at different heights. But I think I'm good with them all being the same size. I have a little bit of a school of fish there. A little more environment and I think we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and add some finger coral to our screen. And I'm going to have a small piece of finger coral right here off the front. And then a larger piece centered behind my shark. So I'm going to resize this using my resize tool. Push it back further in the scene so it's not cutting into the seaweed and then rotate it a bit so that it doesn't look the same as the piece of coral in the front. Perfect. Now I'm not limited just to using ocean objects either. If I go into the local gallery, let's scroll over until we find Hawaii. Because I think an underground volcano would look pretty neat in this scene. Select Hawaii, scroll to the right, and you can see there's a huge volcano that we can add to our world. I'm going to add this volcano and center it way in the back here. And I can see the bounding box, like right here, would eat my scene up. So I want to make sure the bounding box is behind all of my objects. That looks good right there. I can see the volcano kind of in the background. Let's rotate it and see if there's a better angle for us. Oh, that looks good right there. And there you have it. We've created an undersea world using the world properties and objects from the Alice Core Gallery. Once you're done adding and adjusting and making a scene that you really like, you can hit play. One thing that I didn't mention is that the seaweed by default is animated as an object in Alice. When I hit play, I can see the seaweed kind of rotates back and forth. A little bit unrealistic, but still kind of cool. And you can get a little bit of a different effect if you rotate the seaweed a little bit so that they don't look like they're all moving in sync. If you're happy with what you've got, you can click take a picture and save a JPEG image to your desktop that you can load later and you know, Email to your friends. They'll love it. So that is how you use the Alice world and object properties to create a more realistic scene than what you can do with just out-of-the-box Alice where everything is very sharp and well-defined. Hopefully your undersea world looks awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this or any other video or about any of the properties or anything that's, that's come up, Feel free to leave those questions in the comments and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.